This guy's having a bad day. <laughs> Man, I'm having a bad day. <laughs>When I was younger, I put an unreasonable amount of time into my GameCube. Mostly because that was the platform I had Time Splitters 2 on, but also Super Smash Bros. Melee exists. A game that got me so attached to platform fighters that I eventually would move to playing Competitive Project M, and then I would eventually move on to playing Rivals of Ether, and then I would eventually run the local Portland Rivals of Ether scene. Hey everybody, as always Jarek here, and if you can't tell, I really liked my GameCube. But I had never played Geist before, and to be entirely honest, that was just because it looked like a horror game. I mean, look at that cover. That doesn't tell me that it's a first-person shooter, I thought it was a horror game. It looked like Amnesia, or something along those lines. As you can tell, I didn't really look into this game very much, and that's a shame, because this is one of, I think, three Nintendo-published rated M games. The only other one that comes up off the top of my head is Eternal Darkness. Yeah, this is a very different vibe than a normal Nintendo game. I remember being one of those people that got really upset at Nintendo for dropping support for quote-unquote hardcore gamers when they moved on to the Wii. Honestly, I still kind of feel that way, but without the childish pettiness. As you can probably tell, this is not a horror game. This is a first-person shooter. And first things first, I should say I am not playing this on native GameCube hardware. I am emulating it using Dolphin. This game is not as easy to emulate as some other games. You have to change some settings. First thing you want to do is uncheck the dual core support option. Usually you never want to do this because it helps with your frame rate, but in this case the game will crash no matter what if you have it checked. Second thing is that since this game has an uncapped frame rate, it fluctuates all over the place from 30 to 60 FPS. This is not because you're unchecking dual core support, this happens whether you have it checked or not. After doing some experimentation, I found the best way to fix this is to overclock the emulated CPU. Putting it to 152% seems to be the sweet spot for me. Turning it any higher than that makes the game perform worse, and turning it any lower makes the game run at 30 to 60 all over the place again. But at 152%, you can mostly stay stable at 60 FPS. Some areas are still gonna drop your frame rate, but it's a lot more stable than the original GameCube hardware. When I looked up Geist, I found that the original hardware ran it really poorly. I'm talking averages in the 20s and sometimes dropping into the teens. The next big technological issue I had was the aiming. And keep in mind, I'm not using a GameCube controller. I do have a GameCube controller adapter, but let's be real, the GameCube controller really sucks for first person shooters. So instead I'm using my Switch Pro controller, which I'm starting to enjoy a lot more today. If you know me, you know I really like 360 controllers. They are the most optimal controller for me. They feel so comfortable. However, they've been discontinued, so if your 360 controller breaks, it's really hard to find a new one. The Switch Pro controller to me is the closest thing to a 360 controller without using a 360 controller. Anyway, this isn't too relevant because the problem with the aiming in this game is just that the aim assist makes it so much worse. The aim assist is egregious. If you're trying to move and shoot at any time or you're trying to shoot an enemy that's moving on their own, your aim will frequently be pulled in front of them and you have to fight it constantly. I really wish I could just turn the aim assist off because it does the opposite of what it's intended to do. It hurts your aim. And no, this isn't because I was using an emulator. Looking at past articles, people were having the same problem on the original hardware. Thankfully, this isn't as big of a deal as that sounds because first-person shooter mechanics aren't really the highlight of this game. Otherwise, the tech is pretty standard for a GameCube game. I honestly don't have a whole lot to say graphically, it just kind of looks like a late GameCube game. The textures are a little bit muddy, the color palette's a little bit muted, but I mean, it doesn't look great or bad, it's just a GameCube game. It does have a widescreen option in-game, which is nice, so if you're emulating on Dolphin, turn off the widescreen hack or it will mess things up. Alright, let's move on to the story. You play as a sound protagonist by the name of Raimi. Raimi is tasked with infiltrating the Volks Corporation. Intel is stating they're making bioweapons. You infiltrate, grab what you need, but on the way out, get captured. Well, more so shot, but you seem to have survived that. It turns out the Volks Corporation is not making bioweapons. They are instead separating people's souls from their bodies 
and using an army of ghosts. Yeah, the story is a little out there, but honestly, it's out there in a way that I couldn't help but love. This means that as a main character, you are playing as a ghost, which gives you the main gimmick of the game, possessing people, items, and animals. I'll talk about that in a moment. Anyway, your goal is obviously clear here. You're trying to stop the Volks Corporation from using an army of ghosts to take down humanity. This is all told to you within the first 15, 20 minutes, so I'm not giving you any spoilers. This game flew under the radar and I know people are going to want to play it after they see this video, so I'm not going to spoil the story. What I will say is that it has true villains in it, has true protagonists, and I actually did want to know what happened. I did feel fulfilled by the ending of the game. And now we move on to the gameplay. Let's talk about possessing people a little bit. As a ghost, you were able to possess items, animals, and people. However, in order to possess living things, you need to scare them first. Now, while you're a ghost, everything is moving in slow motion, so you get time to think about this. And these were honestly my favorite parts of the game. Way more fun than any of the traditional first-person shooter combat. In order to find a way to scare someone, there's usually a puzzle presented to you. For example, I need to possess this guy. I found three things in the room. A steam valve, a fire extinguisher, and a ladder. So first I possess the ladder and knock it over to him. This spooks him a little bit and backs him into the fire extinguisher. Then I possess the fire extinguisher and spray him with it, which makes him run away. Then I possess the steam pipes and overpressurize them, scaring the hell out of him, which then I can now possess him. I needed him so I could open doors, because before this I was possessing a dog, and the way I scared the dog to possess the dog was by possessing his food bowl and making his food fly out at him. You now see what I mean by this being incredibly rewarding and just fun. This is a really cool concept that I wish more games used. A lot of the times when you possess something, the result was just so ridiculous that I wanted to see what would happen. You know, rats would definitely not react this way. Holy shit. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I'll give you one more example because I really want to talk about it. You need to possess this engineer. So you possess his equipment, shake the hell out of him, which scares him so badly that when you possess him, he won't go near his equipment. This is a problem though, because you need to get by his equipment to grab a fuse. So instead you unpossess this guy, possess the fuse, roll it over to him, and then possess this guy so we can pick it up. You can really see Nintendo's influence here. It feels more like a Zelda puzzle and it's really rewarding. What isn't rewarding though is the first person shooter combat. It's kind of standard mediocre combat. You get the abilities of whoever you possess at the time. You possess someone with a shotgun, well now you have a shotgun. A shotgun which acts like the Half-Life shotgun and can fire two shells at once for some reason. And he does it one-handed, because that makes sense. For those that don't know how shotguns work, the thing underneath the barrel is not another barrel, that's where the shells are loaded, it's a magazine. Anyway, if you possess someone with an AUG, well then you have an assault rifle. If you possess someone with the South African Vector, well then you have a Vector with a grenade launcher. Wait, a Vector? Dude, this gun needs to be in way more games. I love how this thing looks. And that's definitely a vector, not a SAR-21. Anywho, I think you get the point. The problem I have is that the combat is kind of just standard first-person shooter combat for 2005. It's really mediocre and not that rewarding. I didn't hate myself when I was in these segments. They weren't really hard or anything. They just kind of existed. I did think for a moment that overclocking the emulated CPU broke the physics and made the ragdolls go insane, but no, that's just how the ragdolls worked on the original GameCube too. Same thing with the hilarious voice acting that doesn't fit. Who says this when they die? There is the occasional boss battle, however, and these were usually pretty fun. Not amazing, but you know, pretty fun. That is with the exception of one boss, which blows. This boss takes place on a rail. You need to protect that guy in the motorcycle. Unfortunately for the guy in the motorcycle, there's a giant truck chasing after him. If you don't take care of that truck soon enough, it kills the guy in the motorcycle and you restart. Cool. At first, I thought I had to shoot the explosive crates next to the truck to blast it off course or something, but no, that's not what you need to do. What you actually need to do is shoot the tanks on both sides, then shoot the engine block until it's destroyed. Cool, so it's timed and it resets me if someone else dies. Fun. But even more fun is the fact that you can't aim at anything. As I discussed, the aiming in this game is incredibly difficult. To make things even worse, I'm on a moving truck and every time it turns, it pulls my aim with it. So yeah, this part sucks, but it's kind of the one exception to the first 70% of the game or so. I say the first 70% of the game because I can point out a very specific spot in this game 
where suddenly everything after it sucks and is just miserable. I really don't know what happened. I don't know if they ran out of time or what. All right, so there's a boss battle where you get your original body back. So you are finally full. You are Raimi. You can still possess other people though. Well, Raimi has a suit that allows him to slow down time. He also has a chain gun that has a grenade launcher. The grenade launcher only affects ghosts. In this battle, you were fighting one of the main villains of the game. And it's fine until you kill him and then a ghost pops out. You need to shoot your grenade launcher at this ghost. The catch? This ghost can possess you, and when it possesses you, you have to mash the A button to get it to unpossess you. It's not just a few times either, you really have to mash. And all while this is happening, this ghost is controlling you and trying to get you to kill yourself. And this will do a ton of damage to you real quick. Ow. I, that, that killed me? That's so fucking lame. That's stupid as shit. That's some bullshit right there. Yeah, it's not fun and it doesn't feel fair. To make things even better, right after this battle, you have to shoot down a helicopter. You only have around 10 or 15 seconds to actually shoot it down or the game just fails you. So now you have stress to take it down quickly enough. I immediately thought, well, okay, I have slow motion, so I'll just abuse that and shoot it down. But no, you still don't have enough time. What you're actually supposed to do is possess a SAM turret and then shoot it down. After this, another helicopter comes along and you have to shoot this one down. This one was honestly piss easy, but after you shoot it down, it crashes into a bunch of containers containing spirits. Remember how that other ghost could possess you? Well, all of these can possess you too, and you have to fight 12 of them. If you die at any point, you gotta do it all over again. I got real sick of mashing the A button. So that's what feels like three boss battles in a row. Thankfully, after this, you're thrown into a regular combat encounter, but it's the laggiest one of the game. Apparently on the original GameCube, this would drop your frame rate into the teens. It's also very short. It's only like 10 minutes long and kind of forgettable. After this though, you have another boss battle, the most pointless one of them all. You have to fight two large statues. They're never foreshadowed, they're never mentioned, you just kind of do. At first I thought, well, okay, this could actually be interesting. What if I possess one and fight the other one? That'd be sick. But no, it's very basic. You shoot their weak spots and then you shoot grenades at them until they die. And after you kill the first one, you can get cheap shotted. God damn, I do a lot of damage. All right, well, there's one taken care of. Let's deal with the other one now. Ow! That killed me! Are you fucking for real? What the shit? Yeah, that totally felt fair and like it was my fault. This boss sucks. It's so unoriginal. There's nothing unique about it. There's no reason for this to exist. To make things even better, in the very next room is another boss. This one at least kind of makes sense because it's one of the main villains. But again, this battle isn't fun either. You're just fighting against a guy in a wheelchair with miniguns and rockets. There's no puzzle involved. You don't need to possess anything. You literally just shoot him until he dies. He can also do a ton of damage to you really quick, so you have to play carefully. But that's really hard because there's also spirits in this area that can possess you and if you get possessed you might as well just give up and restart yeah this boss battle sucks too to make things even better after you kill him there's another boss battle this one thankfully at least has a cool looking design like actually it's kind of badass no i'm not biased anyway this boss battle is fine it's different because you're fighting a boss as a ghost which is unique and overall it's okay but my only takeaway from this is that the last two boss battles shouldn't have even existed they didn't need to be there they could have ended on this one instead at least the story had a nice conclusion with characters i actually cared about and i wanted to know what was going on so it has that going for it if you can't tell this game is a mixed bag it's a game that I wouldn't mind playing again and then immediately stop when I knew it was going to get worse. I feel like this is how most people look at Zen and Half-Life 1, where they just stop playing. But imagine Zen is like 30% of the game. Personally, I don't share that sentiment. I'm fine with Zen. It has some bad parts, some good parts. Meh. But yeah, despite being frustrated at the ending half of the game, I was having some of the most fun I had ever had in a game in the earlier halves of the game. It's a really interesting concept to be able to possess things and it's just different. Do I regret playing this game? Absolutely not. I think it was worth the experience, but it could have been a lot better. Would I recommend you to play it? Yeah, definitely. And I actually would like to see a sequel, but I know that will never happen. But I think that sums up everything I wanted to say. A big thanks goes out to everyone that watched me over on Twitch. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash Jarek for Gaming Dragon. If you subscribe, you get to see my videos ahead of time. And an extra huge shout out goes to Fusion Beam, who donated a ton of subs and a bunch of donations 
thanks doesn't cover it enough. I never really know how to express gratitude because really, thanks is just not enough. And the same thanks goes to everyone that watched this video. I'll see you next time.